Okay. So, last session, we continued the journey through wild space, um, engaging a crew of hostile Gith Yankee and a few wandering shadows before, on your way back, you encountered the other group of trainees while they were making their return, while you, while you were making your return voyage. The other ship had been badly damaged, um, presumably by the space seals that you all had encountered earlier, and seeing the ship in its state, you all decided to stop and help, and rescued the stranded recruits. You all then returned to your start position, and the simulation ended. However, when you returned to the academy and the illusory situation around you faded away, you returned to a scene of chaos. The chamber had been somehow tampered with, and the resulting explosion is what caused the devastating damage to Micken's ship from the Space Seals, and also a lot of damage here in the simulation deck. Now, it appeared that whatever explosion, whatever magical eruption had happened here, had wounded several of the instructors. But after getting them back up on their feet, helping out Micken's crew, and um, restoring some semblance of order to the illusion deck, you began sifting through the aftermath. It was then that you all discovered some strange metal plates that had been jammed into the panels of the simulation deck. Each of these strange plates bearing a mark that was very familiar to two of the instructors. They said under their breaths the name Vokath. Refusing to elaborate, the instructors ordered you all back to your studies. And with that, the next several weeks went by in relative peace while you performed your studies, learned the ins and outs of spell jamming and wild space, spent some time on your own individual focuses, and all the while, more and more crews were being lost to mysterious circumstances in wild space. Ships vanishing without a trace, some returning with their entire crew destroyed, others simply not returning at all. So after these weeks of these strange occurrences and talk of spies within the Academy, the instructors, the bridge crew of the Academy, now find themselves beginning to run short on available crew to send on missions. Your training nearly complete. The instructors decided that it was time to begin sending cadets out on their first missions. And as you're all roused from sleep very rudely by Bozentardo, that is where we pick up today. All right, everyone, so here we go. <laughs> All right. Sorry, everyone, just a moment. My notes have disappeared on me. Okay, so this day began for you all at 4 a.m. as you were awakened rudely by Bosentardo in a most discourteous fashion. She barged into the room, throwing garbage cans around, calling for everyone to get up and get to stations, and so, dodging thrown garbage cans, you geared up, ate a hasty breakfast, and were immediately commanded to the deck of the Hammerhead ship called the Flighty Foundling, the real-world analog of the ship that you had just been, been flying through your simulation. You all get aboard the ship, and Bosentardo informed you all that the lack of the crews means that she needs you all to go out on a sh on a on a short sortie into into wild space. She sends Petty Officer Winston Ryback with you all as an escort, and begins her briefing. She informs you all that an adamantine meteor has struck the spire on Hakatha, and you lot are going to recover it. The bad news is that Hakatha is populated solely by Beholders and their kin. The good news is that an empty Tyrant ship just so happens to be drifting in orbit above Toril, your planet. 
simply sitting up there waiting for a crew to crew it. And Bo Centardo makes it very clear that you all will be that crew. Though you will need a spell jamming helm installed onto the ship in order to do so. This is where Petty Officer Rybeck comes in, and he will, as he will show you all how to perform the procedure. So, traveling aboard this beholder vessel, you should be able to reach the spire without attracting the unwanted attention of any other tyrant ships patrolling a cop in space. Post and Tardo informs you that, you'll, that they will drop you off in the Hammerhead with Petty Officer Winston Ryback, who will ensure that you all don't get in too much trouble. You'll command the deckhands, Mick and Haverstance, Cricklet, and Fred, who will also be accompanying you all. You need to identify who among you is going to be in command of the mission, as well as who commands the ship. A word of warning, though. Tyrant ship is made of stone, so don't try to land it in water or you'll sink like a rock. The hammerhead ship, the flighty foundling, then takes to wild space, zooming off into the atmosphere, and it doesn't take long for you all to go beyond the clouds, beyond the blue of Toril skies, into wild space. A few moments later, you see what looks like a rock floating in space with several strange appendages floating off of it. It doesn't take you long to realize that that is the tyrant ship. A massive essentially floating boulder in wild space. And the flighty foundling docks alongside the tyrant ship, which looks like a gigantic stone-carved beholder floating in orbit above the planet. You're dropped unceremoniously into the tyrant ship's cargo deck along with a crate of supplies, a navigational map, and a shiny new spelljammer helm. Petty Officer Winston Ryback pulls up the rear of this group wearing a backpack laden with experimental tools Pierce, he's brought several potted plants and what looked like some stove burners with him. The burners and the potted plants clink together as he turns and waves goodbye to the flighty foundling, which has already set course back to the academy. So, <clears throat> now all aboard the tyrant ship. Everybody see okay? Yeah. I see me and the Better ship. Better look at the ship you pulled up to. Not as fun looking as the hammerhead. Not quite. And. Oh, it's cool. As well, Petty Officer Ryback sees you all struggling to see, or some of you struggling to see, he would light a torch. Um, uh... Oh, thank you. So, are we in the appendages? So, you all pulled up right alongside it and were put into one of the low. You see those holes along the side of the uh, of the vessel? Yeah, that's where you all would have been put yes. into. Um, Petty Officer Ryback okay. will tell you all that this is the cargo deck of the Tyrant ship. So. Hmm. <clears throat> Here is a list well, of all uh, the supplies that were sent with you. Titans! Titans! <laughs> you go ahead and get oh, you guys a we're... little bit of a better vision of this map up here as well. So this is the layout of the Tyrant ship up here. If you look towards the northern end of the map, you'll get a good look at it. There we go. Can everybody see I that? Everyone should be able to see through the tyrant ship. Hey, what's yep. up, Zypher? Welcome in. Did not what's miss up? much at all. It's a list of stuff. A list of stuff? So, um, essentially what has just happened is you all have been flown up into orbit above Toril. Whoa! <laughs> you all have been flown up into orbit above Toril and um, dropped off along this tyrant ship. Bosentardo instructed you all that Winston Ryback would assist you on this mission and... You are heading out to the far ends of wild, to the far ends of realm space, to investigate a meteorite that crashed into a beholder planet. This is one of the beholder's ships that just happens to be empty and floating up above Toril. 
You'll be using the ship to get to the Beholder planet. Okay. And let's not and, hope there's... And all that stuff is left. stuff that we're all carrying, That's or... all the stuff that was dropped off with you. to your supplies for the mission. Oh, okay. Additional supplies in addition to what we typically carry. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Uh, I'm, uh... <sighs> I will say the first thing Matthias would probably prefer to do would be to uh, utilize the light cantrip so he could actually on a well probably on like say arcane focus bell buckle something like that just to make sure he has the light to see by considering he is human. Okay. What do you want? Uh, what do you want to see with the eyes of night? Uh. It's an hour. Silly, silly humans can't see. <laughs> I don't think um, Heron can see either. I don't think rabbit folk yes, can I see can. in the door. Yeah, oh, Micken, can? Micken also can't see. And Fred I, can see. I, I don't think, know if Fred can see, but Crickly can. I don't can. think I can see. I can hold my breath forever, but... You oh know. my god. <laughs> this is a party of mostly not... Wow. Oh wait, I, I yeah. don't have dark vision, I lied. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think yeah. Aragon had dark vision. It's well, fine, I'll take the front. Okay, <laughs> going forward. Three of you are going to have dark vision. So, Ryback would be kind of looking around, getting a good feel for the environment, for the area around, and the Spelljammer helm that he currently, that you all currently have in your possession is a literal metal chair, a large metal throne. Um... It is rather unwieldy, and you see you see what Ryback kind of walk up to one of these circular openings and look up, and says, "We've got to get the spell gem and the helm all the way up there." I am going to suggest that we uh, each have collect, a torch. Uh, Uh, what I'm going to suggest is we each also make sure that we collect a climber's kit since they were provided, and also Piton's rope, all of that sort of stuff. Because uh, as we can tell, this was not exactly—I don't think this was designed for things with uh, legs to traverse. Ryback would nod and say the beholders would simply use these access chutes to levitate up throughout the ship. We need to get the. Spelljammer helm to the command deck, which is all the way up there. Get, really wish they had some sort up. of access. So, there's gravity on here? So, if you all look up towards the, um, towards the, uh, the map at the top here, the ship is oddly set up. The gravity plane is essentially pulling you towards What's the best way to describe this? Um, you are upside down in the cargo deck right now, technically. Oh. And so the does. gravity plane oh, is based on the command deck. So anything below the command deck on that diagram is technically upside down. Okay. So it's so, a mini, like, sphere or <laughs> gravity thing. So theoretically, until we get to the command deck, we would be falling through the hole. Then once we get the area of the gravity plane, we would have to climb up the rest of the way. Science. Ah. Uh. We're Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, uh, Well, uh, I believe that I will, I believe, uh, actually probably the simplest way to utilize this, uh, red is a dampier, correct? Yeah, I was already going to climb up the chute. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, probably having him go with some, uh, some pitons to anchor a rope up, up once he gets to the other side, were there to kind of assist us as far as, uh... Are there no stairs? Oh, beholders, don't, beholders. beholders don't have legs they float around they have no need for stairs or ladders 
It was inconsiderate. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> ramps either. Oh dear. Um, oh dear. Yeah, I think is that someone considerate to assume that bid holders would want to make their ships available, accessible to us. Yeah. I guess we. I mean. <laughs> Siri is thinking out loud, just like, I wonder how many chickens it would take to tie it to the helm to get it up top. <laughs> Zook's just gonna climb in someone's backpack. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Adorable. If, if he keeps acting like a stuffed animal, he will be a stuffed animal. <laughs> Zook can hang out with the chickens in the backpack. <laughs> oh, they'd be best Aww. friends. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look here where Winston is, and uh, let me also just double check what stuff we've got here. Yeah. I'm going to snag a climber's kit, hammer, and. Can I have my dark vision for an hour, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I gave everyone torches. Or oh, you have dark vision for an hour, okay. Yeah. Uh, our <laughs> wizard gave us. Or not wizard, our, our magic guy. Other, <laughs> other magic guy. One of the uh, magic guys. I just have a, I just have a light cantrip running on. No, nope, you have dark vision now. Oh, are you able to give it to everybody in the party, or? He gave it to three of us. Okay, so myself, the Haragon, and who else has it? Alamana. Yes, uh, the wizard. Yep. The wizard needs to see. Yes. <laughs> Does Sari have dark vision naturally? No. Nope. But Sari is okay. Yeah, there's plenty of torches lit, okay. too. All the cadet, all okay. the uh, deckhands and Ryback all have torches lit, so. I have a question. Are swarm keepers able to see through the eyes of their swarm or not? I do not believe so. Okay, thank you. It probably helped if I read things, right? No. Well. You could just feel it out the whole time. None of us have played a swarm keeper, so you can just kind of make it up, maybe. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, using the uh, using the diagram of the map that you have up top, you can get a good idea of what your gravity plane is like. Um, so, it is odd to say the least. Essentially, these round things that you're all standing on here are hatches that lead upwards. Opening the hatch shows you a tunnel. That looks like it's going. It's so hard to. So these gravity planes are so weird. Um, so essentially, if you open the hatch, your helm would drop through until it got to the gravity plane. In which case, it would begin. It would begin. It would kind of like hover there. So you got to find a way to drop it, and then how to pull it up through into the command deck. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of details it on the map, like it says the cargo deck opposite gravity from upper deck. Hollow deck opposite gravity from upper deck. So yeah. the only place where you're actually standing and down is still down is the command deck. Everywhere else it's reverse. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh... And, uh, how long are these shoots? We will call them... Probably about 50 feet. 50 feet of shoot, yeah. Okay. Uh. He talks. Don't. So I'm gonna take. So I take it that the plan is for Red to first progress up, secure. Uh, for Red to progress into one of these tubes first, secure a rope, and then us make our way to join him, and then help. Then hold the spell jamming helm up there. Can Sarah look around to see if someone else has already done that? We're not the first ones on the ship, right? Surely other people have not. Yeah, you can certainly take a look around. Perception or investigation? Which you prefer? Um, whichever you'd prefer. Awesome, because my investigation is negative one, and my perception... I just noticed a Fred. Five. Fred. <laughs> yeah, that's Fred. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get my sheet to listen to me. Rick, let's go in with you, Zook. I saw that. <laughs> he um, didn't say anything, he's just kind of following you. Zook's just exploring. 
Okay, sorry, my roll any... 20 is acting up in a big way. I'm just gonna do it on my other sheet. That's all right. This is time. Does, does he see anything interesting in his exploration? So, down here <laughs> on this first level... <laughs> it does appear that all the equipment has been intentionally taken elsewhere. Um, like the okay. cargo hold has been stripped clean. Okay. We. Come on, Kirk. I don't know if we can do this, but can we drop the gravity? Then we could float around in here like the. So, unfortunately, uh, not. It's... Gravity is pretty static on these ships. It just follows okay. right through the plane that it was created when it was first brought. There are ways to change a ship's gravity plane, but um, what? that would be beyond anything that okay. anyone here is capable of doing. Okay. How long does it take me to climb up to the, the top side? Um, about four or five rounds. With your climbing speed. Am I able to longbow a rope up there, kind of like tie a rope to my to my arrow and like pew? Um, yeah, especially since if I'm reading this correctly, you would be shooting down into a hole. Sweet. <laughs> How would you like me to do this? Um, well, do a longbow shot. Are we shooting it to red or intentionally past red? What are we doing here? Intentionally past him, like into some rock or whatever, like at the at the bottom top. <laughs> okay. The end. Um, yeah, him. there there would be there would be no rule necessary for that then. Cool. Except for uh, dexterity saving throw from red. Yep. I will not shoot my friend. Oh my <laughs> I <God>. will not shoot. <laughs> shoot him in the heart. You you We're... see here her visibly like. <laughs> <laughs> We're level three, right? Yeah. Yes. My yeah. hit yeah. points are only 10 for some reason. Yeah, I fix that. the same Ooh. problem I've been running into forever. I think Anila also has the same issue. I'll fix it right now. Mine should be 10 plus 7 for each of the other levels, so oh, no. 24. I can. F Mine's 24. Okay. Anila, what should your hit I points be at? I'm sure it's not 8. Um, 20. I'm gonna say, imagine it was a poor squeeze. <laughs> <sighs> For some reason, but I can't. There we go. If the oh. rope landed, we could secure it on the bottom and then, like, climb down. Up. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so weird, especially <laughs> on a ship like this. Like, on the sailing ship, yeah. it's easy, because as soon as you get, like, underneath the ship, you're just walking on, on the bottom of the ship now. But, like, these yeah. ones, it's like. Up is weird. So if, if Zook were just a cannonball into the circle, he'd just fly through it? So if you were just to jump into the circle, Zook, you would fall and fall for about 30 or 40 feet, and then you would begin bobbing in the gravity plane. Is there anything in the in the chutes that looks dangerous that I would get caught on? Um, it's a slightly, there's a slight curve to it. So if you were to just jump in, you would definitely need to make a deck save against hitting the wall. For the curve. Okay, I can do that. Um, cause Zook's sick of waiting for Red, so he's just jumping in. <laughs> so I'm not that slow, guys. Yeah, right, everyone. <laughs> so <laughs> Zook's Red, impatient. as you're up there, tying the rope, getting it all secured, you know, doing the job that you went there to do, you just hear a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> Does Red have to catch Zook, or no? He's gonna stop at the plane. Okay. So go ahead and get that deck save in there, Zook, to see if you can avoid the walls. Is anybody surprised the rabbit just murked <laughs> himself? <laughs> All right. So yeah, Zook flies right past you, Red, and begins bobbing up and down about, like, five or six feet below you. He just waves at him. So when you're caught in a gravity plane like that, it's essentially like treading water. You are neither, you are kind of like bobbing between these two points of gravity. And I reach the wall and attempt to use it to climb. Yeah. He's gonna do that. He's got, he's got his own pitons and a grappling hook and stuff, so. He's just gonna climb the wall into the command center. 
So you begin climbing up into the command center. Yes. Good stuff. Okay. There is a stone hatch. Zoom. Can you move me? Yes. Um, as soon as you make a strength check, an athletics check to move that stone hatch leading up to the command. Oh. Okay. Zook, you're barely able to get it done. <laughs> but you poke your head up just in time down here to see another very large empty room that looks... Oh, I can't, I can't see through your eyes. One second. <laughs> and Zook should also have dark vision. I, can, I just I can't do. see everything. Can... Like, my bot doesn't have vision on him. There we go. Okay. So, Zook, as you head up there and begin looking around, you see... What looks like it was once the command deck of the ship. Everything has been stripped out. There's been panels ripped from the walls. You can see a nice indentation in the floor where a spherical chair might have bent. It appears that they ripped out the Spelljammer helm that was there. But as you make your way further into the command deck, Zoo, you begin to hear something strange. And all of you feel the ship lurch slightly as if it's, it's as if it began to rotate at a clockwise spin. Oh shit. Zook, as you take another step into the chamber, the entirety of the spelljammer of the tyrant ship begins to spin at an extreme speed. Oh. I need please roll initiative. Oh fuck. Are you just in the gravity <laughs> well spinning? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Zeus is going to be screaming, GET YOUR ASSES UP HERE! Bye. Auf Wiedersehen, bunny boy. It might be. I might be rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Cool. Is everybody... Your so... crit's still not as good as mine. Not crit. <laughs> it looks like we are missing Matthias. You know, you don't have to be mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hank, come roll initiative. Put the baby down and roll initiative. Priorities, man. <laughs> roll the baby in initiative. <laughs> there you go. It would be tempting. It's tempting. But, uh... <laughs> <clears throat> okay, fantastic. All right, everyone. So the ship begins to spin. Siri, you are the only one that is able to catch yourself and really get a handle on what's happening in the situation before the rotation begins to begins to become very difficult to control. What do you do once you realize that this spin that the ship is about to begin a major spin cycle? Uh, get to a wall as far from the hippo as possible. <laughs> All right. Thank you for reminding me about the hippo. <laughs> Okay. Um, he's, I do not want to be in, in centrifugal motion with this hippo. That's going to be a lot of inertia from the hippo. I'm just saying. Like, that, that centrifugal force, I do not want to be behind the hippo. The inertia? That'd okay. be some major fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Zook, you also get a get a, get to act, to react to this whole situation before things really start getting crazy. Um, so, Siri... You get yourself as close to a wall as possible and attempt to brace yourself against the coming spin. Uh, make a athletics check, please. Is it spinning on like an axis, so the middle, like from the middle of it? It is beginning to spin in that in that kind of fashion. Okay. Like a gravitron. Yeah, basically like a gravitron. Oof. Prepare for vomit from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what are the floors made out of? Stone. It's all stone. Perfect. Ouch. Siri, so we got an athletics check coming for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought. Uh, yeah. Now I'll, I'll do it right now. I thought it was just automatic. Would, wouldn't it be acrobatics? Not for what Siri's trying to do. Oh. Okay, Sarah, you do get close to the wall, but you are just not able to get a good grip on that surface as things begin to spin. Zook, you also begin to notice the entire chamber beginning to spin. What do you do? He is already headed towards the middle, so he's going to get try to get in the middle as fast as possible, and he's stabbing a piton into the nearest thing he can for grip. Okay, okay. Uh, it's a hatch on the middle there. 
Seems oh, is there a handle on? Paper. Is there a handle on the hatch? Uh, no handle. It's just seams. Damn it! And I'm assuming the hat the hatch is metal. Uh, all stone. stone. All stone. All stone. All right. So, um, he's gonna go right about there and stab a piton into the because there's less force where he's at versus on the outside. Okay. So, you so he wanna, wants to be in the middle. So you want to jam a piton into a into a crevice to see if you can get some leverage and hold on to it. Yes. Uh, athletics check. Okay. Uh, Does it look like there's any controls over there? If, uh, I love you, if, puppy. If no. Zook had decided to try and look for them, he might have found something. It does. Look, I, he did get described to him, though, that there was a lot of machinery that looked like it was ripped from the walls. Yeah. Okay. Now, the spinning begins in earnest, and you all feel oh, yourselves beginning to get flung towards the outer walls of this structure. I need everybody, 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 to please make dexterity saving throws. Do I get advantage since I'm holding on to a piton? You did not, Zook. As you look down at your work, proud of yourself, your piton slips loose and you get flung against the wall. Oh, he's just going to hug the wall, I guess. Because <laughs> you did just go with that 12, right, Zook? Yeah, it's yeah. too early. Okay. So, everybody that got below a 15 on your saving throw, you are flung to and fro against the walls, thus taking... How does that work with Spider Climb? Um, if you have a climb You ain't going speed, nowhere. So, if you have a climb and he's, speed... And he's in the tunnel. Climb. Right, the tunnel would still get whipped around and flung against the walls. So, I will let you make a... Stra a athletic check on your turn, Red. But as it stands, this all happened too quickly, and anybody that acts after initiative count 20, no special action against saving yourself just yet. Got it. Okay, so that is nine points of bludgeoning damage to anybody that did not get above 15 on their saving throw just now. Oh, jeez. oof -da. You just hear Zook screaming, What is going <laughs> You right. made it angry! <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So that is going to bring us to Matthias. The ship is still spinning. What do you do? Uh, step one, try to drive one of these pitons in, near into the wall That'll and be an hook my stuff to it with a rope. If I can. Alrighty, that'll be an athletics check. Matthias, you slam your pizza on home and hope for the best. <laughs> I'm right. Uh... I don't really think I have any other options I can do. Okay. The actions that are available to you right now are relatively limited because the ship is in full spin at the moment, so like yeah. firing weapons, moving very far would all be rather difficult. Is this how we die? Just Is this how we die? <laughs> <laughs> Just we can't get out of the skin. Alright. Anila, uh, what do you do? A um, couple questions. Oh. Um, where red is, is that like a like a tube thing? Yes, red is inside of the tube. Alright. Um, I'm going to try to move into the tube. And then mingle with the wind, uh, which is basically casting levitate. Okay, fantastic. So you cast levitate essentially. So it, you all you see know, when I'm in the tube. Okay, it's fantastic. So you do in your difficult terrain, so you definitely have enough movement to get to the tube. So Neil, you get up into the tube, and you ca and as you use your ability and become weightless, the ship continues to spin around you. You have made yourself safe. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to get up to... Where were we putting the... Did we bring the chair in? Has that happened yet? It is. Yeah. It is. In, I believe it is in the tube currently, waiting for the opportunity to be dropped down towards the people. <laughs> uh, let's get on the other side of the, the... I wonder if you could sit in the chair and get it to work now. 
there is a process to attaching the Spelljammer to the helm, to the uh, ship. Yeah, so, so we'll, uh, I'll just try to get on, you know, so that I'm not below it, and don't okay. get squished by it as I'm levitating. So, alright. And that'll be... Okay. That'll Fantastic. Be Red, what do you do? Uh, Red's going to reach in his pack and pull out his first ever mutagen and swallow it. And that's going to give me... It's called Celerity. Okay. I get plus three to my dexterity score, but I get disadvantage on wisdom saving throws. Nice. Okay, good stuff. Ziggy, what do you do? Oh. Oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. With that, uh, can I use acrobatics to run up the tunnel like I'm running on a log on water? Sure. Okay. Red, you do manage to get up the tunnel. What do I see? Um, a stone hatch. <laughs> no, I opened the hatch. Uh, you opened, you opened, um, the left side hatch. Red and Anila are on the right side hatch, and it would have closed right behind you, Zypher. Or, oh, okay. Zypher. How do I open this hatch? You gotta push it. A, uh, athletics check. Uh... No budge. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, brings us to Ryback. He... Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, Z sorry, Z, you go ahead. Yeah. So, um, there's, is the... And is the rope still tied up there? It is. Or... What? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, okay. So is there a way I can, like, hold on to the rope and brace myself or something? So you can make an athletic check to that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in the tunnel, grab onto the rope. Um, can I cast Guidance before I do the athletics check? Sure. Okay. So I'm casting it. Guidance. Making athletics check. Okay, I'm gonna do my guidance. Hey. Ten. Ten. You hold on to the rope for dear life, Ziggy, and are immediately flung loose from it and against a wall. Oh. It was worth a shot. <laughs> So, you see Ryback, and he is flung about first, and it hits the wall, and then immediately looks up, like, ah, and pulls out a little token from his from his uh, pouch at his waist, and speaks a couple of words, and you see him lift about two to three feet off the ground and just hover there, casting Levitate on himself. All right. So, Zook, you can try again to secure yourself if you'd like. Um, first, he's going to look to see if he sees anything to possibly stop this washing machine. Absolutely. Make a <laughs> Arcana check. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of sparks going off. Lots of levers. Lots of symbols. Would, would the 12? No. No, it would not. <laughs> so he doesn't see anything... So uh, he's done looking and is going to attempt to secure himself on the wall. All right. <sighs> Athletics again? Yep. Hey! Now wow. you feel much Nowhere. more secure. All right, he's Sarah. He's got that piton on it and he's standing on it. <laughs> nice. Sarah, you also have another reaction. So, another action um... to take in reaction. She is going to try and secure herself to the wall like everyone else, like okay. uh, in a position in which she can defend herself if necessary. Got it. What would you like me to roll? That would be athletics. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Siri, <laughs> you feel pretty secure. <laughs> all right. And with that, the ship continues to spin and spin and spin. And everybody beneath initiative count 20, we need to do those dexterity saving throws again. Um, Zook, you have advantage on the roll, um, as do you, Red. And Anila, you do not need to roll. Neither does Winston and Ryback. You are both unaffected by the spin any longer. 
Uh -huh. Um, I'm gonna uh, take my reaction for lucky footwork and roll a d4 to add to mine. So I'll take a 14. It's probably still not gonna get me shit. I'm holding onto a piton, though, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you had advantage. All right. Uh... Okay, once again, everybody below a 15. You are flung to and fro against the walls, taking 2d6 bludgeoning. I don't like you. Another seven. <laughs> the ship doesn't like <sighs> us either. With that, the rotation begins to slow. And then finally stop. Oh, gosh. Thank God. <laughs> Zook. Zook. Full of chicken vomit. <laughs> Zook's just like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> All right, can hear through the the, the hatch he's at is just. So, All right, well, you would see though, uh, Sari, you would be the first to see that Micken and Fred are both lying unconscious, bludgeoned uh -huh. into into oblivion. I will bring oh, no. it back up. <laughs> you just hear Zoo. Well, uh, well, you can't because the, the shaft's closed. He's gonna stick his head down, and be like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy just has a deep sigh. Well, now <laughs> I definitely think it's his fault. <laughs> Wait, are they dead yet, or they're not? Dead, no, they're not right? dead. They're just unconscious. Okay, and then I just give him a stone look and be like, "I told you, do not die." <laughs> Fred would look very, very thankful. Mikan would kind of brush himself and say, Oh, um, thanks. I, I I didn't think I didn't think I'd get that badly hurt, but I appreciate it. Thank you. I just stare into his eyes and be like, the team <laughs> is only as strong as its weakest link. Do not make the same mistake. He starts looking around. <laughs> Who do you think it is? <laughs> I just blink. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh... Considering we just got thrown around like that, I'm going to start moving into this uh, corridor here. I know technically for me it's technically down, even though <laughs> map-wise I'm going up. Okay. Nothing ever makes sense. I know! <laughs> this tyrant ship is so weird. Zook's gonna go back to looking for things to uh, controls. Fantastic. I feel like we need a spherical, like, actual model to put things on. Yeah. Uh, Can we push the um, pilot chair the um, towards where it needs to go? Or... Absolutely. Okay. That's what Anil is going to I would say just make sure that we have a rope attached to it so we can haul it up whenever we get up to the command deck. Oh. Because uh, once we're up there, we should just be able to pull it up and position it as needed. Right. Okay. So in theory, what we're doing up here on the deck that you're all currently at is that you're opening the hatch and then dropping the Spelljammer Helm into it. It will then plummet towards red until it reaches the gravity plane, and then it'll bob up and down until somebody mm -hmm. can pull it from there up into the command deck. Uh, yeah, not complicated at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to do this while I am sitting here because I do not like sitting here with just eight hit points. Let's at least, yeah, that'll help. <laughs> all right, so we open the okay, top yeah. hatch. Yep. So Red, you're already down in the tunnel, closer to the command deck area. So if you're looking, if we're looking at this map up here. Anila and the chair would be down here. And red would be right up here, just above the gravity plane. Got it. So all I need to do is sort of hook the chair and then lift it up the rest of the way. Right. Okay. Just sort of tie a lasso with my rope. Fantastic. So with all of your planning, and with the assistance of uh, Petty Officer Ryback, um, you are able to get the chair off and up into the command deck. Yeah, 
with all of you putting that much effort into it, there's no real chance for it to mess up, um, especially since you're just dropping it most of the way. Okay, so spending the next 15, 20 minutes getting the spell jamming helm all set up. What would you all be doing while that is getting done? While that is being set up? Zook is searching the command deck. Right, would anybody else join Zook on the command deck? Uh, yes, yeah. I think uh, would. Yes, yeah. I would. I'd, I'd be curious to see what I could figure out about how this vessel operates and some of the stuff about it. Okay. Yeah, maybe Matthias will have better luck with the the commands, console thing and the on the wall. Yeah. Or figure out what got taken out. That's kind of what I'm curious about. All right. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of know we're not alone on this ship. So I'm also going to activate my crimson ray. Okay. Um. Well, I'm not entirely sure. It could be we may have inadvertently set up some sort of trap that was left behind by somebody. Yeah, it could have been just part of the ship defense. An that automated means... thing? Perhaps. Uh, or perhaps something timed, or who knows what, but... Uh... I do think we should set up the spell jamming helm... Probably try to bring what supplies we want to have up here, like food and stuff, just to prevent us having to traverse through that gravity plane as repeatedly. And looks uh, like, but that was fun. Ryback gives you a stern Eric. looking, a stern look. <laughs> he puts his head down, ears go down. <laughs> oh. Uh, Sari has the sending stone in case we need to send a message to Bosun Tardo. Alright. Um, to that, Ryback would say that it was likely just a trap set off left behind by the beholders that abandoned the ship. I blame Red. <laughs> As he's backing uh, all bashful. Do we know why they abandoned the ship? Ryback? Yeah. The, Good yeah. question. So Ryback would not know. He would let she would tell you all that the ship arrived in orbit maybe five or six days ago, um, and then the complement of four beholders that were on it um, simply abandoned the ship and drifted down to Toril. And where in Toril were they going to? He says that they were able to track two of them. One of them went to the north, presumably into the Spine of the World Mountains. And the other went south. It looked like he might have been heading to Chult. They lost track of the other two. Chult. So maybe mm. they just don't need the ship anymore. Ryback would say that the ship can't land on the planet. It would crash like a meteor if it tried to enter the atmosphere, and it would sink like a rock if it landed in the ocean, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, maybe they just left because it was the, was the most efficient way. Very possibly. But the, my question is, and... why would they damage it on the, their way out? You or... can make investigation checks if you'd like. Uh, there, I there would... is something <laughs> scarier than a beholder in here. <laughs> Scarier than a beholder. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna worse. have to be. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be used to low in. <laughs> That's weird. I know. It feels so weird. <sighs> so Ziggy, you really don't have any idea. But Matthias, as you're looking around and kind of going over the damage that was done in the panels. Um, it does look like scavengers. A lot of the panels have been removed relatively cleanly. Um, it's not that they were torn or ripped out or anything. 
Uh, with a 17, you can tell that a lot of the a lot of the various controls and things like that, including whatever would have turned off the spin cycle, are gone, removed. He's mm. over. Um, uh, well, with that, I would like to attempt to assist with getting the spell jamming elm set up, if at all possible. Fantastic. Okay. So, Ryback would assist you all in getting that set up. Um, again, the actual magic and full techniques involved are still beyond all of your abilities, but with Ryback's help, you are able to get the ship set up. And with that, he asks which one of you is going to be flying. Um, uh... Anilla? Anil yeah, I, I was thinking it was, uh, was me. Okay. Hooray! <laughs> okay. So, um, Ryback informs you that the journey should be relatively uneventful. Gives you the coordinates, you all have your navigational maps to get there. It's gonna take several days to get from here to Hakatha. And in the meantime, Ryback is going to be performing some experiments. He has brought several different things with him as the one of the science officers on the bridge crew for the academy. He's brought several potted plants and several stove burners. He says that he wishes to see how wild space and different varying gravity planes may affect um, fires and see if there's anything he could learn about how they may be able to better control fires back on the planet. Um, so yeah, he would head back down to the cargo bay and begin setting up all of that. He does assure you all that none of the equipment he's brought with him should be dangerous. The fires that he's using are minuscule, no bigger than a matchstick. Why are we bringing it to Hakatha again? So, I will let, I will let you know right now. So, your briefing, though it's actually good for Zypher to get this again. So Bosentardo told you all that an, that an adamantine meteor has struck the spire on Hakatha. You lot her to go there and recover that adamantine meteor. <clears throat> and she lets you all know that Hakatha is populated solely by beholders and their kin. But luckily the ship happens to be in orbit, ready for you all to attach new spell jammer to and take. Um, uh. So yeah, mission to Hakatha is to get that adamantine meteor that just struck. I beholders. <laughs> yeah, I have the holder planet. Wow. We're going to a beholder planet. Oh, this does not <laughs> sound like a. <laughs> I, I I don't see this being very easy. Ryback says he never said it was going to be easy. Just that there was no one else to do it. Mm hmm. Well, let's keep an eye on the, everything, <laughs> eh? Wow. Yeah. Ziggy, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! Boo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I try. So Ooh, Ryback hard. does does reassure you all that the location of the meteor crash is far from any known settlement, and the fact that you're on a beholder ship should allow you all to to avoid to avoid um, any unwanted attention. I heard the word should. <laughs> Nothing's for certain. All right, so yeah, Ryback heads down into the cargo bay and begins his own work. And what is this hollow deck? It's funny you should mention that, Z, because the only hatch you all haven't been into is the one that Mickin is currently standing on top of. And as you mm -hmm. ask, what is this hollow deck? You all hear a clang come from right beneath where Mickin is standing. Mickin's gonna die. Looks down. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> he looks down and steps off of the hatch. <laughs> Kind of hesitantly looks around at the rest of you. I just like stare at Nick and then be like, get away from there. Get away now! <laughs> he runs. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
just ready in action. Yeah, I'm ready. So, you all hear what sounds like metal being moved around, maybe some boxes being shifted around here and there. Hmm. Hmm. Another loud clang. <laughs> Ready in action to attack whatever comes up. Yeah. Red's going in. <laughs> oh, Zook, was, Zook was gonna knock on it anyways. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, Dross's arcane focus. Zook, do you knock? Yes. Just in case. Okay. The sounds immediately stop. You hear a couple little clatters, clinks, and then silence. Knock again. I told you we weren't alone. But that also does not necessarily mean that it has been through here. So it's like, I wonder yeah. whoever that is, if they like the spin cycle too. Hmm. Do you think they can open uh, is the hatch? Um, yes. So, opening the hatch, you all can see down into another deck. That one is large and bowl-shaped. Contains several large piles of mechanical parts. Red, the sensation for you would be very odd, because you, you would have to poke your head out, like, down into the hole, but then you would, it'd be like you were poking up through, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a manhole. Right, so, so I was kind of like wondering, is, very it above the, is it above the gravity plane or below the gravity plane? It is on the other side of the gravity plane. Okay. So. Does he see anything? Yeah. Uh, metal parts strewn across the floor, several partially disassembled autonomes among the wreckage all around. And we make a perception check to see what's um, um, been making the clanging sound, other than maybe these parts just moving around. I would say that you would need to enter the deck to really get a good look. I'm gonna climb the walls inside them. Okay. Even. The walls. Okay. Cricklet's uh... gonna go with you there, Red, so you're not in there alone. Zook would go with him. Me. I would go too. Okay. I think all of us. All right, everyone go ahead. Right. Yeah. Everyone that's not working on putting the thing into place. Uh, that, it's already in. Oh, okay. Okay. Zook's gonna run to the first pile he sees and search it. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, Zook, there as you go. rush up to the pile, <laughs> you start going through it, and the first thing that you notice is the face of an auto gnome. Its eyes just whip over to you, and you hear like a little. Do you get to say, oh, hi! Hi! <laughs> and with that, you see what looks like a blade kind of reach out and place itself on top of the autonome's face and then dig in just a little bit the autonome screeches just a tiny bit more and then an insectile creature made of gleaming metal pulls itself along the face of the autonome and reveals itself and as that happens you all see a couple more of them beginning to emerge from various piles all around Crawling out, the insectile automatons menace you with rotating saws that expend, extend out from their forelimbs. Oh, very kind nice. Of look around towards each other and begin to speak. It seems like they're making clicking noises that seem oddly familiar to one another. And then Cricklet kind of, his eyes narrow, and he's, all of you here in your head, they're speaking Thrykree. And he says, I'll translate. Stupid creatures brought us okay. a spell jammer helm, uh -huh. dismember, then steal oh. ship. Uh, I think we gotta kill these guys. Yeah. 
Uh, yep. <laughs> and with that, they burst out from inside of those piles of wreckage and leap towards you all, and we are going to roll initiative. I think Zook's going to cause chaos for... Zook looks back, looks back at everyone and kind of shrugs. It was inevitable. He is Thanos. <laughs> Looks like we're missing Sari in the initiative. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't find her. There we go. Clockwork horror. Oh, you all can see nameplates? You shouldn't be able to. Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay. Stand by. Unprepared. Sorry. Oh! There we go. Oh, I'm not right. horrified anymore. Are, are, are you also aware that they're clockwork? Just, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Zook, seeing them jump out, you are first. What would you like to do? Oh. Uh, One second. Anila, are you still having trouble hearing us? Can you hear me now? Hear us? Can you hear me? Okay, it sounds like she's still having some audio issues. You starred. <laughs> okay, well, we've got a couple turns until it gets to her turn, so we'll go ahead and proceed for now, and then when it gets to her turn, we'll wait for her. Uh, Zook, what would you like to do? Boop, 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 boop. Um, well, my computer's going retarded. Um, he is going to first use bonus action, steady aim, and then he's going to take a swipe with his rapier at this little bugaboo. Bugaboo. 17. Zook, as you stab out at it, it uses one of its claws to bat away your blade. 17 you, does not hit. Oh. You, he just gives it a look like, are you kidding me? It clicks at you. Crick lit, sends into your mind. It says, no, it is certainly not kidding you. Well, <laughs> Zook just prepares for it. Oh my god, that is so perfect. And the one that you struck at Zook gets yep. to go first. <laughs> Okay, it rears up both of those knife-like hands, and you see them both kind of shift and contort into saw blades. It then leaps at you with them. No way. <laughs> wow. That is an 11. Oh, and a nat 1. It misses utterly, Zook. Ah. Uh. Zook just laughs. You got your bluff in on it. <laughs> All right, Sarah, you're up. All right. Um, I, I okay, can, can you guys explain to me? I'm, I'm reading it, but I want to make sure I understand. Zypher strike? That Zephyr means strike? I can move, whatever. <laughs> um, I can move without provoking opportunity attack, right? Correct. Correct. And my next attack will have a D8 on it. Yes. yes. What it and you, okay. plus you get an extra an extra 30 or 60 feet of movement. Yep, extra 30 feet All of right. movement until the end of your next turn. All right, I until the I'm end of this turn. Skip. I'm going to skip that then because I just, I'm going to skip it for now. Um, I'm too close. To oh, it also gives her advantage. Mm. I believe. Okay, then I think I'm going to use it. 
Um, sorry guys, I was trying to... No worries, to no worries. Let's take, a, let's take a quick look at it. So you move I, like the wind I... until the spell ends, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Once before the spell ends, you can give yourself advantage on one weapon attack roll on your turn. The attack does extra d8. Whether hit or miss, your walking speed increases by 30 feet until the end of that turn. So um, yes, you do get so... to give yourself advantage on an attack roll and add a d8. Okay. And as long as you're concentrating, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. That's the big one. Alright, okay. I just wanted to get away from him so I could use a bow attack, really. Awesome. Uh, hold on. Longbow against the one that's right by Anila and Matthias. Seventeen glances oh. off of its armor. Oh no! Mm -hmm. This is pretty much all I'm good for, guys, and it's not good. So it didn't take the thirteen. Didn't take nothing. Sorry, Sarah. What was that? What was the question? There was no damage at all. Okay. No, no, no. no. Seventeen misses. It did. Did it take the thirteen? Oh. Yeah, you got a hit to do the extra strike toast. damage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to um, move over here away from things, so I have them. I can shoot more of them got later. It. Got it. Got it. Okay. So as long as you're concentrating, Sari, those bonuses Thank you. stay active. Give me the concentration medal there. All right. Uh, Anila, are you back with us? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Okay, good stuff. Yeah. It is on you. All right, so um, I have a little little dude next to me. Yes, I'm you gonna, do. He's right there. I'm going to reach out, grasp him, nice. and do shocking grasp. Okay. Ah, not very much damage, cool. damage but oh, I... It hits, and it does not phase it at all. Oh, they're immune to lightning. Ugh. Does, oh. And it doesn't <laughs> get. Can it still use its reaction? It takes no damage. Is there, for shocking grasp, is there an addendum on that to say that it has to it has to deal damage to do anything? I don't know. Let's take a look. Put the skill. No. Oh. So advantage on the time. And it can't take reactions, so it looks like it just can't take the reactions anyway. Okay. That is how I would how I would interpret that. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Um. No, I think. Uh, you can move out. Is this a friend here? Yes, Crickle is the friend. Okay, okay so. Right. May not be friend shaped, but is friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Um, no, I'm gonna stay there. Um, yeah, I'll stay there. Okay. All right, Red, you're up. Uh, Red is going to use his uh, curse, and he's also gonna amplify it, so he gets advantage on the first hit, taking five points. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. For eight fire damage and ten piercing damage, nice. which is also magical. Okay, okay. All right, good stuff. So eighteen. And then it'll just circle around putting this thing between him and everyone else. Okay. That brings us to three of them acting consecutively. Uh, oh, sorry, Matthias. Yeah, turn, go ahead. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Sorry. Uh, seeing this thing here, uh, he is going to try to shoot the thing in front of him. Well, no, actually, what he's going to do is he's going to use his action to craft a arcane cannon, his one per day. Okay. And, uh, it 
and it's basically going to just be kind of mounted there on his... Essentially kind of mounted on his shoulder, kind of like one of the turn things from uh, Predator. Okay. Fire a uh, blast of force. Basically, it's going to try to fire a blast of force at this thing for... Or... Oh, I think it's the same as my spell attack modifier. I'm going to have to make a little thing for this, aren't I? Do you need a token for it? Because there's basically three. Uh... If it's easier, I'll just say he's keeping a hold of it just so you don't have to do a token because I'm making it okay. where it's the uh, force ballista. Got it, got it. Uh, but it's going to be the same spell attack as mine. Uh... Or actually, that may not. Actually, no, no. I may change my because uh, this actually these things have high AC, so I think I'm going to actually find the type for once. It's going to have to make a dexterity saving throw. Eh, Basically, it produces a 15 foot cone. Each creature in the area must make a dex saving throw against my spell save DC, taking 2d8 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Okay, fantastic. It does fail to save. Um, unless the DC is lower than 11. But yeah, it's a 13, so okay. it'll take the damage, and... Let me actually move some stuff so I can roll a couple of d8s right quick. Uh, 8 fire damage. And at least to say, I'm, of course, trying to angle this thing where it's going to draw our uh, wizard in it, if I can. <laughs> okay, yep. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, that's my action, so that's it. I utilized my action to create the cannon, and I'm able to activate it with a bonus action, so that is all I currently have. Fantastic. Okay. So, Red, the clockwork horror that is in front of you that you just struck kind of recovers itself, rights itself, gets its feet back under it, and leaps at you with its rotating saws. There's a 23 and an 18 to hit. Uh, the, both hit. For a total of 12 slashing. Got it. Let's just do the next one. It begins wildly slashing its saw blades around, one for Matthias and one for Anila. Matthias, the one for you is a 10 to hit. That misses. Um, and Anila I do a also... reaction and do shield? Uh, it is not necessary. It is only a 10 to hit you. Uh, you do get to you oh. do get to decide if you want to use shield after you find out if the attack lands or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying the attack didn't land. The attack did not land. It was only a 10 to hit. Okay. All right, so All right. that is going to bring us to the last one in front of Ziggy. Ziggy, this one does a little something different. It flees and crawls up one of the walls. Oh, it does not grow. It flees and crawls up one of the walls. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wants, oh crap, I know what it wants. Ziggy, what does it, it want? You can make an opportunity attack against it if you'd like. Okay, I will do that. I don't think I do. Okay, it then turns towards you and brings up its two rotating saw blades. The saw blades collapse and pull back into the into the mechanism, and two forks emerge. You see electricity dancing between the two forks. Ziggy. Oh. That lightning then lances out towards you in two bolts with a 20 right. and an 8 to hit. Um, I'm going to shield and okay. they both miss. Fantastic. Cool. All right, Ziggy. So that thing is now currently how far up the wall could it get? 30. So it is 10 feet up the wall. 10 feet up the wall? Mm -hmm. On you. Okay. I am actually going to move down now that it's out here. 
And as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. So, 22 for 6 points damage. And then can I have a great sword as a Spiritual Weapon token? I have a few different swords for a Spiritual Weapon. Um, that is probably the best I can get as far as a great sword. Okay. <laughs> I can make it bigger, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then as my action, I might actually put it on my Twilight Sanctuary. 22 does hit with the spiritual weapon. Okay, six force damage. And then I'm activating Twilight Sanctuary. Yeah. So, um, can I change my token aura radius? Uh, unfortunately not. Because I have the health auras up, we cannot mess with the auras. Okay. Is there some way we can do like yes, a 30 foot aura? For you. Um... Or I could put it down a circle. That way I can control where it goes. That is a fact that you would be able to do that. Uh... Uh -oh. One circle, one <laughs> circle, one big circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the piggy. One, okay, there we go. The radius, isn't it? Yeah, 30 here. foot radius, right? That's big. Yeah. Uh, I okay. think that's the room, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the just the room, room Zeke. <laughs> All right, the whole room gets... Um, Let's see, how many temp hit points? Seven temp hit points to everyone. Nice. Ooh. Is that everyone, everyone? Cricklet, too? Oh. Uh, yeah, Cricklet, too. Oh, I thought I rolled initiative for Cricklet. Where'd he go? Uh-oh. So many hands, he doesn't know what to <laughs> do. Get him in there now. He's helpful. Okay, so at the end of your turn, we're going to go ahead and let Cricklet do some actions here. Okay, so it leaps over here to aid Zook, and you see it grab onto the thing with two of its with its two smaller hands, and then lunge in to bite it with its chitinous beak. It's only a six, it bounces off the metal. And... Misses again, he's trying his best. Uh, Zook, you're up. Duke's gonna steady aim again. That's there it. we go. For all that. I always thought steady 17. aim was just for ranged attacks. Am I wrong? No. Okay. Just to advantage on my next attack roll. Nice. He's just in, like immobile while he's doing it. Okay. Yep. All right, Duke. So anything else? That was bonus action action, can't move, right. so he's there to take the punch. Saw blades. Uh, a seven and a nine. Man, it can't hit you at all. Well, Zook's just kinda like, ha! <laughs> and wiggle he's kinda wiggling a little bit like ha. <laughs> Alright, Sarah, you're up. Alright. Alright, um, alright, alright. Sarah right. would like to try and hit something again. Um, dang it, now there's people in the way of everything. Okay, so... Uh, yes. There's one that's trying to climb up and escape. Is that the one that's up in the, like, right in front of me yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to QP with that, please. It turns yeah. towards you and clicks its, clicks its mandibles at you, its steel mandibles. Dang it! 17 misses again, I unfortunately. Can't hit. <laughs> Their AC is really <laughs> high for level 3, to be fair. I'm supposed to be good at this. I'm supposed to be good at this. <laughs> All right, Anila. Okay. Um, um, well, you know it's bad. The wizard takes out the 
quarter staff and oh, no. pop something <laughs> on its head. 13's not gonna do it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my action. I should have okay. disengaged. Um, but okay, so, um, yep, that'll be turned. Alrighty. Red, you're up. Hits. Ooh, six fire and 13 piercing. All right. That one is beginning to look a little rough. Bits and pieces of it aren't, aren't moving as well as they should be. A couple little plates are falling off. Anything else? No, oh, that's it for it. Matthias. Uh... First off, uh, the one in front is going to have to make that saving throw again for the bonus action or take 2d8 fire damage. 17. Just, uh... Okay, so he takes half damage there. Yeah. Half of 14. Jeez. And uh, he is going to take, he's going to aim at this one that's trying to run away. Okay. Up on the wall. And he's going to shoot at it with a fireball. That's a hit. 22. Uh, hey, max damage that I could roll with that. Nice. <laughs> 10 fire damage on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I th think if I move, it could get an opportunity attack, so I'm going to stay where I'm at. Okay, okay. Brings us back around to several of these horrors. Uh, this one is, of course, going to try to finish the job on Red first. Oh, God. 16 to hit Red. That misses. Followed by a 9. Alrighty, alright. The next one splits his attacks between Matthias and Anila again. Matthias, you are looking at an 18 to hit. Uh, I... Now have hold on a second. I have currently. I don't know if it's popping. Let me check. So I'm seeing an 18 on your token. It's popping up on my spell list yet. At level three, I also gain shit. There he is, but I also have a shield okay. spell now because okay. level three artillerists get shield and thunder wave, so I'm gonna burn one of nice. those. Yeah, it's just not on my deal yet, so I have to manually mark it off. My apologies. Right. So you cast shield. Yes. Okay, fantastic. It does not make impact. Anila, another rotating saw blade comes your way. That is a 14 to hit. Um, um, shield. Fantastic. So, the creature lashes out at both of you, but simultaneously, as these two saw blades would have made impact, shimmering light flows over both of you, deflecting both attacks. Brings us back to Cricklet, who is going to keep trying his best can do it, buddy. All right. He gets, a, he gets a nine with the bite attack. Siri's just mystified that, that these... Uh, what? Um, Crickly appara crits apparently the with the claw attack. <laughs> wow. Just... Brings a, huge, brings a claw down and just rakes it across this thing. But that is going to be 14 slashing damage Cricklet does with that claw. Go, Cricklet. Nice. Yeah. Zuko's he throws, his, he throws all four of his arms back and lets loose like a chittering victory cry. Zook puts his hand up for a, a high five. He looks at it, tilts his head, and then raises one of his hands. And Luke smacks it like yeah. he looks concerned. <laughs> Why? Why have you struck me? <laughs> uh, uh, it's good. It's, it's good. I'll explain later. <laughs> All right. The one that is climbing up the wall climbs up the wall no further, and begins oh. blasting. So oh, it started blasting. Started blasting. <laughs> um, it is going to go for the wounded one, red. 11 to hit off the Apparently first one. Apparently it's my spirit animal. And that misses. And a 10 to hit off the next one. Man, they can't hit anything. All right, Ziggy. So, it's okay, me either. 
they can't hit us and we can't hit them. Right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll call it a draw <laughs> and leave each other alone. They demand your surrender. Okay. <laughs> Bonus action, spiritual weapon. Nice. Nice, that hits. Yeah. Okay. 11 force to stuff. that guy. Okay, he's almost down. I'm going to try and bring it down with a normal attack. Great sword! Oh, that's a hit. Okay. All right. Eleven slashing. Shattered Ooh. to pieces. I think you brought yeah. it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to move over here. <laughs> right. Zook. I sent you a message. Sent who a message? Sean? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Ah. All right. Okay, which is good, because I'm going to do... I'm going to attempt something different. No, I'm just going to go with... Steady aim again for advantage. You already have advantage. You already have advantage. Oh, never mind. I don't need to do that. Um, you can move. Hope... You're free, bunny. <laughs> 18, 18 hits. For you lot. Hey, we found a precipice. <laughs> uh... Okay, wow. We've just been barely missing them the whole time. <laughs> right, poor Siri, literally <laughs> barely missing. Ooh. Yeah, for 17 amazing. again. Or no, 15, 15. sorry. Mass hard. Mass hard. Okay. Um, boop, boop. I don't need to move, I guess. So he's just going to go, I'm God, and stand there. It raises both of its both of its saw blades and clicks at you. And attempts to murder you. I expected. 17 to hit. Uh, it meets. Right. Four. Four slashing. All right. That just takes out from the temp hit points. Ziggy. Sir, yes, sir. It turns its attention towards you. Yep. Oh, it crits you. Um, where is, where okay. is your silvery barbs now, wizard? <laughs> no, don't have it. <laughs> I don't need there. Hmm. Does the crit land? Yeah, the, I oh guess God. the crit lands. <laughs> it's 10 slashing. Uh, what is it? Wait, what is the crit at? 24. Like, is it a 20? 24. Uh, I've got 10 hit points. Yeah, I'll take it. 10 slashing. 10 slashing. I knew the Chris, just for a little reference, John plays in the Candlekeep game and plays a Divination Wizard, and I never get to create anything because of that past year. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely didn't know. I, I watched it before. Yeah. It's not yep. just Silvery Barbs, it's all, or it's Silvery Barbs, and he turns back time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, share. Share. Yeah, like, living li li living rent free in my nightmares. I abilities to shut things down. And so every time something a crit happens or something lands, I'm just like, I'll allow it. <laughs> right, I gotta, we gotta look. We gotta look over to John. And be like, is it gonna? Is it? Does it work? Can I do it? <laughs> All right, Sari, you're up. <coughs> All right, Sari is going to have like a pep talk with her bow. Hmm. And it's like, Luke Come hears on, you okay, talking to your bow, and you just hear him go, "You can do it! Stop embarrassing me!" <laughs> You can do it! Where's that nat one? I'm trying to support it. Oh, no. Hey, that's a hit. Yeah. There, there is the nat one there, though. Well. <laughs> no, I, I actually hit it twice. The first one is a third. Oh. Bomber. I'm going to use inspiration and give her 21. There you go. <laughs> oh, thank you! Impact! <laughs> <laughs> For six piercing, all right. The all um, right. concentration thing is over, right? No, you still have it. Yeah, it, you do the damage now, too. No. no. Okay, then. Then. Oh, I, it's a plus six, I think? I think oh, the Zephyr yeah. Strike's what? only the first yeah, time. Yeah, it is. It is. Zephyr Strike's only the first time. Um, until the spell ends, you do not provoke opportunity attacks. Okay. So you just, you just don't provoke oh, okay. opportunity attacks anymore. Until the spell ends. All okay, right. Cool. Anila. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm, uh... Yeah, 
I try to hit it. <laughs> Unfortunate <laughs> rolls. <laughs> oof. Indeed, oof. All right, Red, you're up. Uh, Red's gonna run all the way across, try to help the wizards out. <laughs> It's contagious. <laughs> Alright, we've taken down one of them. One of them is getting close. The other two are still going strong, though. Anything else from Red? Nope, that's it. Thighs. Oof. I might actually need a little token for an Eldritch Cannon now, because... Because it's a 15 foot cone, and I can't fire without hitting red if I angle it, I don't think. If you face so it. So I might have to have it walk a little bit in a... If you face it this way, uh, it won't hit. Nope. Okay, then that's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, I'll keep doing that then. No. So it's going to need to make a. Uh, uh, nah, don't worry about it. I'll just kind of keep it where I'm at. Or like. I'm just doing it's like right in front of me or something. Uh, never mind. All right. Uh, she's the kind of fire. Uh, breaking the one up, in front of you. Have to make a DC 13 save. Oh, DC 13 save. Got it. Dexterity. It yeah. does get a critical yep. success on that with a 22. Okay. Still takes half damage though. Well, okay. It says rolling the dice if it'll oh, actually no. spit them up. Uh, two points. So that's not very impressive, but uh, I'm going to take another pot shot at this one trying to climb the wall with a firebolt for my uh, for my main action with awesome. my arcane focus. Uh, I need, neither one else is going to hit, so Negative. it looks out of the way. <laughs> okay. Brings us back to the clockwork horror in front of you all. And strikes first at Matthias. 17 to hit Matthias. That misses. Swings at red. 18 to hit red. That hit. For four slashing. Got it. Right. Brings us to Cricklet. Believe. It's a seven on the claw, but a 21 on the bite for four piercing. Nice. Brings us back to the guy on the wall who no longer has clear sights on anybody, so he's going to crawl back down off the wall. And damn it. rush over here and then lightning bolt, not the spell, a uh, lightning jolt, Sari, <laughs> and Sari, it's a 23 to hit with the lightning jolt. Hit. You take 10 lightning. Wow. Yeah. Oof. Three damage total. Yeah. Because he gave you seven temp hit points through one of the core oh. things. So you Thank really you. took three points of yeah. damage. Sari, it sends another one at you. Oh, now, come on. That is only a 12 to hit, though. Miss. Ziggy. Okay. Okay. I'm going to refresh everyone's temp hit points. Four. Six. Everyone has now six temp hit points. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So change your hit point map to six. It doesn't stack with the previous set. Um, and then I am gonna have my spiritual weapon float over to the lightning bolter. Okay. Yeah, and do an attack. Yeah. Twenty-one hits. Okay. And damage. Fantastic. 
Okay, and I'm gonna attempt to um, attack the one that's almost dead. Okay. Yeah. And... 20 hits. Oh, it has 20, yeah. Ooh. 11 slashing. Down goes another. Okay, and I'm going to, <laughs> I guess, keep moving. You're kind of in the way of, of other people. <laughs> oh, you want to be there? Here. Yeah, I can get there. Okay. Zook. Zook's going in because he sees that no one can hit this one. And he's going to poke a pokey at it. For 17 Zook damage. Zook adds his misses to the pile. Oh, you just hear, see his ears go back down. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. That one's dead. Sari, you're up. Alright. Sari is going to fire at this one here, please. Again, just a very stern talking to her <laughs> longbow. Dang it! You still have your own advantage, I know. don't you? Yeah. Do you want yes. it enough? Yes. Okay, yeah. 26 hits. Okay, how do I how do I get the crit off it? I uh, just click the longbow button in the roll twenty chat. 16. Good stuff. Nice hit. Yeah, good hit. All right, all right. Anything else from Sari? Um, no. All she has is pew pews. All right, Anila. All right. Um, Anila is, well, I'm not doing so well with this quarter staff, so I'm going to use the dagger that's on my, uh, my my belt. Okay. And, uh, That's a hit. And, uh, nice. And my damage. <laughs> All right. She's very excited that she actually hit something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead, Red. Showing us how it's done. Well, hopefully uh... this will change for everybody. Everybody. Will <laughs> right. The trend is broken. Or, yeah, that is. 24 hits. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it wasn't a cleaver. Uh, you screwed it down. Right, cleaver. 10, okay. 10. Uh, and I will gracefully move out of the way so, so uh, Matthias can burn it to death. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I will take attack of opportunity. Okay. Rotating saw attack, that's an 8 to hit. Misses. All right, Matthias. I'm, uh, I'm going to rotate, I'm not going to, like, break, you can still attack me from there, so that's not really doing an opportunity attack, yep, yep. but I should be able to burn it without hitting Zook or anyone else. So it's going to make that DC 13 deck save. DC 13 deck save incoming. That is a 15, does succeed. Okay, we'll take half damage, so five points, five points of damage. All right. And, uh... Hmm. So considering folks are attacking that one on the wall, I'm going to try to shoot this in front of me with a firebolt now. Okay. For my main action. 16. Ooh, yeah. cool. uh, if you're doing a ranged spell attack, you're at disadvantage. Uh oh. Oh. And spell. Yeah, I think I'll take my intentional in that case. All right, that's a crit. It uh, explodes. My damage. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good use of a crit there. Get out of here, and, uh, Xenomorph. <laughs> in that case, should, should I... we be adding acid blood to this equation? Because that's the thing I could do. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna. Love I'm going to use a little more of my movement to get up here where I have a little better line of sight and aim at the fella. Awesome. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Crickly goes charging in. Gets real low and moves unnaturally quickly. Uh, 
The bite attack is a 21, followed by the claw is also a 21. Go quickly. Or 12 total piercing. Alright. Brings us to the remaining Clockwork Horror, who's got one saw for Cricklet. A 14 to hit. That does not hit. And 19 for Ziggy. Fine, I'll shield it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Ziggy. You're up. Um, ha has anyone lost any temp hit points? No. I have not. Okay. Just a couple, but I'm okay. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. Bonus action. Uh, seven, 12 does not hit. 12 does not hit. Okay. And I am going to just attack it again with the great sword. 23 is a good hit. Okay, it's slashing. Okay. Okay. It's gonna... And are you sure you don't want me to refresh? Okay, I'm only down three altogether. Refresh. Ah, right, <laughs> yeah, red's fine. dying. Okay. <laughs> refresh. I have three. Great, great, great. Refresh. I have three hit points. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we. Go. First one. Um, let's go eight hit. Change your ten hit points to eight. Okay, and that's turn. Zook! Zook's gonna seeth his trusty sh um, rapier and pull out his short bow. And he's gonna study aim again. And he's gonna shoot at the guy. 15's gonna miss wildly. Indeed. Alright. Sari. Alright. Uh, Sari. Man, she's gonna have to, like, come around here. And pew pew! No! Nah. Nope. Dang it! <laughs> okay. It's going to bring us to Anila. Bring it down! Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> this thing refuses to die! <laughs> I've. Now that I'm finally not in close combat, magic missile it. Nice. Yay. Let's do it over here. Okay. So all three bolts? Yes. Boom, boom, boom. All right. As the final bolt hits, you see the creature beginning to beginning to shudder and quake before bursting into little pieces of shrapnel. Excellent. And with that, everyone, you all see the little pile of garbage and like uh, and of mechanical parts and all of these other discarded things where you where Zook initially found the first one begins to shift and move. And you all see an auto gnome pop up out of the wreckage and look around towards all of you. Zook's clapping. And Yay! We're going to go ahead and take our break now, and when we come back, you all can meet Wizpop. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Alright, everybody, so welcome back once again. The Clockwork Horrors defeated, silence now settling over this bay, this hollow deck, if you will. Uh, speaking of which, you all can see space from outside of those holes that you're looking through. It's pretty. Oh, it's a hollow deck. It That's is a hollow, hollow deck. deck. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Oh, yes. Someone's very proud of themselves, I'm sure. <laughs> so, but after everything is cal has calmed down, the creature who first caught Zook's attention sits bolt upright and begins a series of whirring and whizzing and popping noises. You can see that emblazoned on his chest plate is a little nameplate that says Whizpop. Hmm. Hi, Whizpop! Uh, it slowly yeah, turns its head towards you. It's like head. glitching and stuttering as it goes. The eyes go wide and it raises up a hand and waves at you and lets loose a series of like squeaks and whines. A shout out. State your purpose. He's not a bad guy. 
Uh, <laughs> on any of the noises he's making, do they approximate language of any sort? Uh, make oh, a make a intelligence check, straight intelligence check, guys. Yeah, hold a sec. Wrong button. Are gnome and auto gnome like comparable languages? Human character sheet. Um, actually, that is an excellent point, um, Sari. During your studies back in Candlekeep, you would have learned that auto gnomes do, in fact, speak gnomish. Okay. Guys, with as you're listening to the sounds that Wizpop are, is making, um, you do you are able to discern discern that it is not language. It is more like mechanical failure that is causing these sounds. Okay. Uh, uh, recalibration. <laughs> can I determine what is wrong with him and if it's possible for us to repair with materials we currently have? Yeah, with the it's 18 like intelligence. We'll go ahead and let you right off of that. Um, so you can determine that he's been badly damaged. It looks like the it looks like the clockwork horrors were trying to dissemble him and use him for parts. Um, judging by the way that the machinery's cut off him cleanly, this wasn't damage from being flung around. This was very meticulous and intentional. Um, you can see that he is badly damaged, and the whirring and popping and hissy noises are coming from a damaged voice box, making it una making him unable to communicate clearly. Um, okay. As you're studying him, Matthias, he begins to tremble. Uh, you Matthias could see the looks at the... Like... Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Uh, Matthias just looks at everyone and says, uh, this, uh, poor creature of pair is not going to be able to converse with us because apparently his means of communication have been damaged. Did anybody so take like... mend? Yeah. Do we have a method of reconstituting him? Um, Ziggy, uh, go ahead looks... and make an arcana check. Zeus is going like, oh, it'll be okay, buddy. We're going to help you. He kind of stops uh, trembling a little bit. Makes a... He just pats it on the head. Good job, Ziggy. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that 17. Will you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. All right. <laughs> Ziggy, as you're looking around the chamber and kind of looking at Wizpop, the pieces are starting to come together. There is enough remains of his former friends to fix him. Oh, that's sad. Matthias, can you think, can you do that? With parts from his friend. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> that's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Emma, Matthias is going to look at Wispop and uh, he just asks, if possible, do you want us to take some of the various parts and scraps that are left in here to try to help you recover? Begins looking around at the other at the other piles of debris. A couple of them were clearly autonomes at one point. He looks and you see his bre his brows kind of furrow towards the center. Uh if you would prefer for us to wait until we're at a place where we can actually find materials that aren't parts you don't know <laughs> if you prefer for us to wait until we're in a safe place to do so please lift up a single finger <laughs> he he, he begins to raise a hand and it like <laughs> he can't raise his hand past like an elbow is that a no raising hand or is it an okay raising hand he I think he might have tried to raise his hand <laughs> kicks the clockwork horror and then points at that oh you do you wish for us to utilize the parts of your now dead enemies to repair you instead that's metal that's Except, metal ex <laughs> exceptionally <laughs> literally exceptionally yeah. metal in every sense of the term and uh God. I applaud Puns. you for it <laughs> I'm on a roll today guys <laughs> 
I feel like Sari is looking at this in just abject horror, like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm, uh... Well, in that case, Matthias is going to break out some Tinker's tools and start trying to disassemble the, make sure he gets the proper parts and all that fun stuff from these things. Okay, go ahead and make an intelligence check with your Tinker's tools. And uh, I believe it's just going to be a great intelligence check in this case. Uh, do, are yeah, you proficient in Tinker's tools? I am proficient in them. Then you can make then an you... intelligence check and add your proficiency bonus. Okay, so intelligence check plus two. Thirteen. Uh, yeah. Not the best, not the worst. Okay. Is anybody assisting Matthias with this? Do we need invest or uh, to be good at anything? Because Zook would be wanting to help him. Okay. So yeah, I mean, Zook, you don't really need much proficiency to be the guy that's holding the screwdriver, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we can go ahead and give Matthias advantage on that, and then you said plus two? Yeah. Okay, so 15, 15 is good. It's not great, but it's good. Um, we'll say like about an hour of work goes by, so y'all can take your short rest. Woohoo! You? Right, Red needs it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And... Matthias and Zook, if you'd like to spend your short rex fixing Wizpop, I will say that you can only roll a maximum of one hit dice. Okay, only. Uh, that is all what I will. That's all what I'm gonna roll in that case. That's all uh, I needed. <laughs> all right. So, you are able to get the parts that you need out of the clockwork cores and fit them back into Wizpop, who after your completing with his work um, Matthias, could you please roll 2d6 to see how many hit points you are able to restore to Wizpop? Hmm, three, but <laughs> yeah. Alright. He's better than he was. Yeah, uh... he, can, he can now speak. Oh, you know what, Anila, you're still rolling straight to me. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay. I didn't understand why that was happening. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a setting on your character sheet that I just need to change real quick. Okay. Thank you. No problem. It's done. Okay, okay. So, Wizpop. In a very broken, stuttery... Thank you you're so welcome. Points at himself. Whiz pop. <gasps> I'm Zook. Hello, Zook. And my name is Matthias. It's a pleasure to meet you. Whiz pop. State your purpose. Why are you here on this ship? So he would explain to you all that he was a servant of the Beholders, as were all of the other autonomes here. Um, they were purchased on the Rock of Brawl and have been working on this ship for months. You might like the Academy a little better. He nods. He's heard of it. Um, uh... Where, where, where did all the Beholders go? He looks out one of the hollow, one of the hollow decks. Portholes and points at Toro. Well, but why? He says that something is going wrong on Hakatha, their home planet, or at least the planet that they call home for now. Um, he says that something's going on there. Some sort of rebellion between the Mind Flayers and the Beholders. Oh. And several of the Beholders said, fuck it, and left. Probably smart Beholders. Yeah, okay, that's what's scarier than a mind uh, or a beholder, a mind flayer. Well. He would go on to tell you all that after the beholders left, a bunch of scavengers found the ship and attempted to strip it clean, but they unknowingly had brought with them several clockwork horrors who almost 
managed to kill the all the crew members, but they escaped, trapping the clockwork cores here, who then set upon the auto gnomes to try and scavenge them for parts and see if they could build their own spell jammer helm. They were unable. He's had a bad morning. He's had a bad few months. <laughs> And this damage uh, to the ship. What was this here? Did the um, did the horrors cause this? He says that the scavengers took most of what they could carry from the command bay. I mean, from the command deck and from the cargo bay. Um, the destruction here is because of the clockwork horrors. Mm, okay. Well, Miss Papa, have you ever, considering the fact that you have worked on this vessel vessel for a while, you're probably gonna gonna know more about its operation and capabilities than anybody else here. He nods. Would you mind assisting us as far as the Hakatha because we have something there we need to attempt to recover? His eyes kind of go wide a little bit and he looks towards Sari. Academy? Uh, for, for the Academy. And then once we're done with our mission, we're going to go back. You're welcome to come with us. He asks if he has to go back to Hakatha first. Uh, you can be... I have a feeling that once we get there, considering how damaged you are, you may be better off staying here on the ship while we Does he want proceed to stay with that mission. On our, our, our spell jammer's not there anymore, right? Oh yeah, it took or... off no, as soon as it they dropped, dropped you off yeah. and bounced. Okay, I thought so. If we had the means of allowing you to go to the Academy on Toril, we would be allowing you to, but our, the ship that dropped us off here has already departed. His face gets more serious and he nods. Akatha, then Academy. Yes. Precisely. Don't worry, you'll be alright, buddy. We will protect you. He sounds like a kid from Florida, you know what I mean? Oh, Grandma's house, then Disney World. (laughs) 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 So, Cricklet comes down and takes a look at Wizpop and informs you all that Remember, when Cricklet speaks, his mandibles kind of move, and he, like, makes these, like, (laughs) kind of sounds, but you all hear it as English in your minds. So, he's speaking to you all, and he informs you that Wizpop appears to be of excellent construction. That if you were able to get him back up to full capacity, he could prove a valuable asset in combat. Mm. When you say that, though, Wizpop begins to tremble. Aww. Aww. Let's not make him fight. No, let's just make him healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Poor baby. Mm-hmm. I wish Micken could be as useful as you. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that little shit? As you all say that... <laughs> <laughs> so as everything is settled into relative peace and quiet down here, without warning, the hatch below you flies up and Micken climbs out of the access shaft. <laughs> God, God. His hair is disheveled, and his clothes reek of smoke. He's breathing hard from his apparent climb. <laughs> Fire! What happened? <laughs> Fire! In the galley! Out of control! Right back! <laughs> oh, God. Was, all I heard was trouble! Dungeon. Thought you ought to know. <laughs> what, did, what did you do, Micken? I, <laughs> he's dying. <laughs> Let's okay. go. No uh, bigger than a flame, he said. <laughs> Would it stop a match, he said. <laughs> How did he make a fire with that much smoke in a stone spaceship? <laughs> oh, okay. hmm. He sounds fishy. Let's go find out. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I love it. All right, everyone. So getting back to the command deck, everything seems fine at first, but then you get over to one of the access hatches that you used to travel from the uh, cargo deck to the command deck, and you open it, and you can see that smoke is filling the area. And since gravity is reversed, it must be thick, and a lot of it to have reached all the way up here. Okay, uh, are there any missing people? Um, Fred is up here. He's looking around in a panic, and he kind of points towards Micken and makes a makes a gesture. Um, Fred would inform you that he was up there performing some maintenance in the command deck when Micken had gone down to check on Ryback and came back up like this. And Ryback is still down there? Ryback is still down there. Okay, uh... Gotta go rescue him, I guess. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's go! Okay. So, as you all head over there, Wizpop is right behind you, Zook. Like, he seems to have acknowledged Aww. what's happening here, and he's, like, marching right behind you. See a look of determination on his metallic face as he on, reaches buddy. down and lifts the lifts the um, the stone hatch with ease. We're just gonna throw Micken out into space and replace him with <laughs> Wizpop. <laughs> <laughs> is Ryback right supposed to be one of our teachers? Like, why are we... Dudes, y'all are a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, heading down the access shaft, your ladders and other things that you've been able to set up make getting down there relatively easily. But it is quickly apparent as you make your way down those shafts that breathing is going to be difficult. As you I don't all... Breathe. If you have to breathe... Doing so would be difficult. <laughs> so, making your way down those access shafts. Cricklet is going to stay with Fred and say that if you do need his help, call up to him, but that at least a couple of them should remain up here on the command deck in case anything else comes up. Wizpop and Micken will accompany you down to the cargo deck. Well, I don't... I can, uh... Breathless. I don't need to breathe this same way so i can go down in there fantastic so i think you i can do hold my breath for a long time stop yourself from breathing um I mean, unending I... breath i can hold my breath indefinitely fantastic air genasi are so cool yeah air genasi are really really great the genasi yeah. in general are really fucking cool characters yes this is my first one nice okay so, making your way down the tunnel, everybody that does, in fact, need to breathe, I need constitution saving throws from you. Sari is not asthmatic. Womp. Who's, or Zook might be. <laughs> Great. Oof, and I've already used my session. And we, don't, and we don't have a druid in the, or a paladin in the party? I have some guidance on myself. Wow, that is some low rolls, people. Yeah, this is where we all die. Everybody but Sari suffers one level of exhaustion. Okay, I'm gonna use my sessional then. Everybody but Sari and Zook suffers one <laughs> level of exhaustion. I have a, I gave myself um, guidance, so I have 11. Okay, 11 gets so you just there. Ma just okay. Matthias. Matthias? <laughs> Only Matthias suffers one level of exhaustion. Sorry, bud. Man, the terrible thing escalated quickly yeah the okay everybody terrible thing the terrible thing is i have a plus four to my con saving throws because i'm proficient in all no i think the funny thing hank is that you actually are severely asthmatic with lung damage oh no yeah. <laughs> we don't want that kind yeah. of realism <laughs> visibility oh. is dropped to 10 feet that makes sense i was like what happened to my dark vision <laughs> I see everything so, still. Yeah. Patient Fun fact. For that, you get five feet. <laughs> Son of a gun. All right, did I forget anyone? We are we are trained firefighters out here, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was kind of like, do I have SCBA on my character sheet? Of <laughs> oh, <not>. no. <laughs> Okay, okay, so everything's looking 
Okay. So, Zooks. heavy smoke Zooks. clouding your vision. You can hear the flames roaring in a deeper section of the cargo deck. What do y'all do? Right back, right back. We left you alone for five minutes. Zook is going to take out a piece of the random cloth he has in his bag <laughs> and wet it down with his water skin and hold it over his mouth. You will now have advantage on any checks that you make against smoke inhalation. Sounds good. Can Did I everyone else follow suit? Action? Yeah. Sure. Yep. So you have your firefighter training. I have my survival training. Blah. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> I have fire training. Sari does not. Sari's like, um, I'm a necrotic so dragon. Is he going to be kind of with that space over here that I'd already checked out? Uh, yes. All right, so Zook's like, all right, this way, guys. And uh, walking which way slowly. Did Zook go? Over no, here. Which way did oh, Zook go? <laughs> walking Zook. Fuck you, there you go. <laughs> Start a train. Fuck Where's the rope? Uh, he's moving one square at a time. He just, oh, man, I hate He just looks generally useless, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's already coughing up a lung, so he's like, don't worry, I'll go back down in with you guys. What is wrong with you? He looks like he'd be awkward around girls. Holy yeah. shit. He I like is a liability. People win. You know? <laughs> oh, wait, hey, we lost somebody. We gotta get her back. Go to the left. Are you down with Where us? Are you? Or are you above us oh. still? Anila just teleported through a wall. <laughs> good job, wizard. Good like job, wizard. <laughs> can you put her right? Can you put her yeah, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll catch everybody up to where Zoo was at. <laughs> Didn't know we were a wild magic here. Okay. Let me know when I'm ready. I'm good to move. Okay. Moment. Love this group. Y'all are the best. <laughs> okay. Sorry. One second. It's okay, we went chaotic on you again. Man, I'm glad I explored everything earlier. <laughs> uh... Okay, so, turning the corner, you all begin to see the flames licking up. The smoke billowing out of that area. As you're looking around, nothing here seems flammable. Zook's like, I didn't see Is anything Ryback? earlier that was flammable. Is it Ryback? Is he the flammable thing? Oh my god. Uh, let's see if we can find where he's at. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I just don't want to lose anybody because I can only see red so far. As long as everyone can see somebody behind in front of them. <laughs> right. Oh shit, somebody's dead. Zook, oh. as you turn the corner, you see Winston Ryback's body in the middle of the room. No! Oh, man. Dead, dead, or... It does appear to have succumbed to both fire damage and smoke inhalation. Uh... We're gonna get blamed for this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no amount of healing can help him. He's like... What? Negative hit points equaling his whole, his actual hit points. If somebody wants to get to him and make a medicine check, I'll do it. Yeah, let's. Uh, Z, I need you to make a constitution saving throw as you oh, enter okay. into the blazing hot room. At advantage. Winston Ryback. Oh, oh shit! Oh. Winston Ryback is dead. Yeah, Let's grab him and drag him back out. Cause... Ziggy, uh, you do take three fire damage. That was against the actual heat of the room, not your, uh, not smoke oh, damage, okay. Ziggy. Okay. Oh, okay. Can we get him out? Yeah. Or... yeah. So <laughs> as you all reach for Ryback, you see what looks like almost a goblinoid face emerge from the fire next to him. It tilts its head to one side and then leaps out at you, Ziggy. Okay. We are going to roll initiative. Is this a, um, an Afridi thing? Um, 
<laughs> Anyone proficient in Arcana can make an Arcana check to determine what these things are. Let's do so. I can't remember what, I can't remember what okay. they're called. Well, these are technically elementals, right? There you go, Matthias. There we go. They are, in fact, elementals. Okay. I was um, not paying attention that day in class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you have lots of stuff to remember as a wizard. There was lots of things to study. Okay. Now, as we begin, at the beginning of everybody's turn, as your turn begins, I need you to make that constitution saving throw against smoke inhalation. You can all do so at advantage since you are wearing the masks. Anyone that does not need to breathe does not need to make the check at the beginning of your turn. Okay. How about the fire, though? Uh, the fire. If you are within five feet of any one of these burning sections, you do have to make a con save. Okay. Okay. Yeehaw. Let's do this. All right. All right. All right. And hey, do we still have the temporary hit points? Or are they gone? Basically, you still have them. Oh, cool. Oh, Zucus, right. don't go away unless you have a take a long rest. Yep. Okay. Zucus, Zucus, furry, so he's gonna stay far away from the flames. <laughs> um, so he's gonna steady aim uh, and shoot at this top one. Got it. There you go. Twenty-one hits, Zook. For eight. Okay. Terrible oh. rolls. The arrow crashes through it and takes eight damage. Nice. Um, that'll be his turn. Red, the method directly in front of you. Oh, wait, I had to make my con save. Sorry. Oh, yep. Thank you for reminding me. At advantage, 19. you do succeed handily. It breathes a torrent of fire. 15 foot cone out in front of it. That is going to be Sari and Zoo. Oh, Sari, we will give you the three quarter cover bonus against against this. Thanks. No problem. So I believe that'll be an add five to your deck save. Red, you succeed. I'm oh, sorry. Deck save. I'm Zuki, you uh, not. Hold on. I'm, I've got this, um... Roshit. Yeah, I Ro think I can... <laughs> yeah, I've... Uh, no, yeah, I've got that, but I've got something else. To, I got lucky footwork. Um, so I'm gonna add a d4 right. to it. Okay. That's the, the hair 11, thing, right? Uh, 11 gets you there. 11. Yep. Hey. So, each of you only takes half the fire damage, so only three fire damage each. Woohoo! Nice, you're up. Uh, I am pretty sure that my. Well, actually, we already spent an hour for the short rest, so that is not active. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is. My little. is just uh, take an aim it, do two things. Uh, Sarah, you wouldn't be concentrating on Zephyr Striking when I'll take that off. Thank you. Go ahead, Matthias. First thing, I'm going to make my con check right quick yep. before I forget. Uh, with you are 12. at advantage. 12 is good. Yeah. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is fire a ray of frost. And, uh. Mm, I'm going to shoot through here at the one here that's close to Ziggy that I can see against that far wall. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure ice is a good thing to fire at, something like that. That one's the one you're so going after? Be... Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 12. Listen. Just hits. Okay. So, six cold damage and his speed is slowed by ten feet. It shrieks and steam begins to roll off of it. It does take twelve points of cold damage. Nice. Nice. <laughs> well played, sir. And, uh... That is my turn for the time being. Red, you're up. Uh, <clears throat> Red is going to enter at his crimson right. Uh, I don't think it's going to do anything, but it does make the weapon magical, so. Uh, this flame, is it okay. flame flame or like just imaginary flame? It's very hot and it hurts. 
Okay. <laughs> flame, flame. Flame. <laughs> Is it bad, bad? <laughs> um, also, like... quick reminder, you'll all have a visibility of only... Oh, never mind. If you're in, if it's in the fire. Oh, what is that going to do to visibility? So we're not dealing with light here. It is just... Okay, so yeah, your visibility is only 10 feet, everyone. Oh. What, oh, what? The fire's... is going on? The fire's not... Gi- isn't it giving us visibility technically too, though? It's, it's no. not smoke darkness, it's smoke. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Can I somehow climb up this wall and uh, put it between me and Ziggy? The wall? Yeah. Oh, you want to put you be, you want to put the method between between the two. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's what without it without exactly like just living in flame. You know what I mean? <laughs> make just, a, you know, I will say you could make a dexterity saving throw. We'll call it a DC he's got, fourteen. He's at a climb speed. There you go. Right, but this is to avoid the flame as he's climbing. Oh. Okay. I'm, dan- I'm dancing in flames. You are fine. able to avoid it. Got it. Uh, and then I will strike out at the method. Nice. Eleven. Fourteen. Oh, fourteen. That's right. Fourteen hits. Uh, four fire, eleven piercing, but I, I don't think fire does <laughs> The fire heals it. <laughs> Yeah, fire does nothing, but the 11 does take it down. Nice. It pops and disappears, and with it goes the flame. Nice. Oh, oh perfect. Uh, I'm going to move back down then. Red, did you make your... Oh, you don't breathe. Never mind. Yeah, I don't breathe. Why can you all see? I don't get it. The fire, is nat- the fire the itself... Fires. Yeah, yeah, the fire's creating light. I turned off the light for it all, though. It's weird. The gods have smiled upon us. Yeah. <laughs> the API gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess they usually work against us, so I'm willing to take the way in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just remember that your visibility is 10 feet, everyone. Okay. That's it for red. Okay. Anila, you're up. Okay, I'm. Anila is going to uh, move to there. Uh, where's our our hippopotamus? He's dead. He's dead. Oh, He's dead, Jim. <laughs> oh, is that Jim there? Jim. He's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> Is that him right here? Yeah. yeah. He's the big axe. Oh, well, then he's not going to object to me doing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to do a vortex warp Whoa. around him. Okay. And, um, <coughs> and then teleport him to the back of the line. But I can't right. see, so I'm just going to, yeah. Oh, he was emitting light. Oh, is that what was happening? He was on. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. He, that was just that was not him being on fire. I swear. <laughs> oh, that's why we can sub. Okay, now we can. Okay. Yeah, no, we can. Oh, team. All right, and um, um, now that I all of a sudden can't see, I'm like, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's going to be end of turn. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. That That's so bad. We all learn something new. If you want light, burn a hippo. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. True. There's a lot of fat in them. Yeah, I was about to say, they've been, doing, they've been doing that with whale oil forever. I can't imagine hippo oil being much different. That is a sentient creature. No, we need to stop. <laughs> We know too much. <laughs> He's okay. no longer sentient. He's not God even breathing. <laughs> he is an object he is according an to object. D&D rules. <laughs> okay, the methods. The methods. I feel like. I feel like. I feel like they should do something now. Methods. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, I did forget something. I will not forget again. Okay. Global damage. <laughs> All right. Um, it is the one here is going to claw 
at Ziggy. You know what? Right? No, it's going to risk the opportunity. No, two opportunity attacks is too many. We've got it cornered. Kaka! Oh! Oh! Uh. Red? Opportunity attack? Yes! 12! 12 hits. Seven. Seven. All right. Ziggy and Red, I need you both to make dexterity saving throws against the fire that it is breathing out at you all. Those are both successes. You do still, however, take three fire damage. Siri, you're up. Point. Uh, Siri is going to kind of grope her way forward through the smoke. Um, and then... You found one. Uh, yay! Uh... It looks like my chickens can attack it. Okay, five feet within the fire, five feet within the fire, Sarah, you need to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, it's actually going to be two. One for your breathing and another for the fire. Con so first save. for the breathing. Con save. Yep. You succeed, and next for the heat of the fire. Okay, good both. Good to go both times. Uh... Am I am I five feet in front of the thing or? Yes. Yeah, I'm five feet from the thing. Yes. Okay. Um. Screw it. I'm gonna hit it with my with my short sword. Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Sari cannot hit anything today. Apparently, this is unfortunate. I can't see. I'm just flailing. How come when I put a gif of of somebody licking a sword, it's crazy gross, but this one's okay? <laughs> well, I didn't notice it. <laughs> that one is not, uh, it's not as creepy as the, you know, that is just not as creepy as the one that you put up, Zypher. Objectively speaking, it is not as creepy. <laughs> yeah, yours has, a, like, a zoomed up to the face. Right, yours, yours is like, you know, you know what yours is, Zypher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what you did. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> okay. He's proud of it, too. Right, oh, and, yeah. and to be fair, we never told you you couldn't use it, Zypher. <laughs> just, you know, he just will never give me a. Switch. He'll just never give me a cursed sword again. Oh God! You want to give me a cursed sword? I'll give you a cursed image back with it. <laughs> Yo. That's but did funny. you get rid of when you removed like the curse? I, yeah, I did. To, Once the curse was removed, I got rid of the gif. <laughs> Weaponizing gifts. All right, Sari. Anything else? No, just some hacking. <laughs> All right. Ziggy, um, breathing and fire proximity. Yep. So two constitution. Yep. Good for breathing. Good for fire. All right. Um, moving here is going to make me, is it going to make me take, use two? Um, fire save? No, no, no. Just Only the beginning of your turn. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do bonus action. We're gonna do a spiritual weapon again. Okay. Okay. 19. 19 uh, hits. Hit. 10 force damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then to counteract all the saves we're making, I'm gonna give us all. I'm gonna activate my Twilight Sanctuary again. Okay. Give us all seven hit, um, ten hit points. Thank you. Ten or seven? Seven. I heard ten for some reason. Ten. That was the damage I did. Okay. Yeah. And that is turn. Whisp pop. Whisp pop. Shakily makes his way forward. You can tell he really wants to help, but is very afraid. Ah, it's okay, Whisp pop. <laughs> Brings us to the method that hasn't acted yet, and can we guess what he is going to do? He's gonna be Give up graciously. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, you know what? Let's go here, yeah. 
Okay. Breeze fire at Sari and Anila. Deck saves from the both of you. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Oh, well, that's a heck yep. of a big save. Anila, you certainly do succeed on the save, but you do still take half of this. Uh, okay, low. Aggressively average roll. Okay, nice. Um, Aggressively average. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst and the best. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> okay, so that is three really? fire damage to. Anila and seven to Sari. Thank you. So, Zook, you're back yeah. up. All right. Oh, no, did I, All did right. I skip? Okay, yep. All good. Ugh, there's fire. Hold on, con save for the first thing. A Oof. 10. So that is against the breathing. Um, 10 mm -hmm. just succeeds. 10 is the DC. Woohoo! Oh, shoot. My mouse just went poo poo. There we go. Um, and then 10 for the fire, because I'm with. Am I within five of it? You are. Okay. So we'll use the wording uh, where if you start your turn within five feet of fire or enter into five feet of fire for the first time on your turn, that's when we make okay. the save. All right. Well, he's moved, so we're going to do this instead. Uh, bonus action Insightful Fighting. I use a Wisdom versus their Deception. If I win, I get advantage. Deception uh, check. That's a cool ability. I love it. Is Just getting 18 on deception. Um, that's it from Inquisitive. Cool. So, well, now I have disadvantage. So, so that's great. Okay. So I'm still going to attempt to attack it. Okay, that's your bonus action. Cool. Yeah. And I get an eight. Uh, eight does not hit. Nope. He just harumps. <laughs> All right, Matthias. <sighs> okay. Uh, first thing first, I'm going to do a Conte Virgo Inhalation. Yep. Which thankfully will be an advantage. You do succeed. Uh, for my action, I'm going to burn my last spell slot and craft a Eldritch a tiny yellow, a small eldritch cannon in the space beside me uh and it's going to be in the force ballista configuration nice uh and i once it's created uh if you just want to put like some sort of like dot or something there that i can move that's perfectly fine you I, got it doesn't it. have to um, be pretty what do you want your turret to look like Generally speaking, I tend to always picture. Generally speaking, I kind of picture him have picture of kind of looking almost like a uh, like some sort of draconic thing. It's either breathing out fire, spitting out a beam of force, or just pops those wings or breathes out like some sort of fog breath for the peeling stuff for the protector type one. Okay. All right. Cool. So, I, just because it's one that I, that I can kind of visualize as, as being multi-purpose according to what I guess you call magical setting it's all. <laughs> right. Okay. Alright. So I'll just get you a cannon for now so we can tell Perfectly where it's at fine. and which direction it's facing. Perfectly fine. Where do you want it? Uh, I can put it within five feet of me so between my and okay. So I click on this bad boy, and I'm going to have it, it can move 15 feet, so it's going to move in two there. Though I uh, probably need to see where it, what it can, because I want it to fire at one of the, at the fire critters. That cannon is just too much fun. Uh, just probably whatever, whoever the closest creature in there is. Okay. That's hostile. Uh... Now, we don't have anything set up for it, so it's going to be a ranged spell attack at one creature within 120 feet of it. Okay. On a hit, the target will take 2d8 force damage. If the target is and if the target is a creature, it's pushed up to 5 feet away from the cannon. Nice. And use it to my spell attack row, which would be... Is this a ranged spell attack? A plus 5, yeah. Yeah. yeah plus I 5. I do so... believe it'll be a disadvantage because there are two creatures within 5 feet of the gun. Can you back it up five feet then? Is I think that's out of your range. You're uh, trying to get fifteen feet. Um, 
no, 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 no. Uh, I'm using the Force Ballista type. Okay. Which does a just... It can only attack one creature at a time. Okay. 120-foot range, and if it hits one, it pushes it back five feet. Right, but that is a ranged attack, right? And you can only move it... You put it down in front of you, and then it could move up to 15 feet away. Yeah. So that is... The, it cannot get far enough to get... Um, you know what? If we... You know, yeah, we can put it right there. We'll just assume that it went to the best possible location to get a good shot. Okay. Okay, yep. Okay, and uh, so it'll be a d20 plus 5 and... So let me just uh, roll one of these things, and we add 5 to it, so... 11! Total. How much? Uh, so 11, uh, 11 plus 5, that'd that be hits. 16. And now it takes 2d8 force damage. Amazingly, slightly below average roll. <laughs> It explodes. Oh. <laughs> but I need everybody within five feet of the method. So, Sari, Zook, and Ziggy, I need each of you to make dexterity saving throws. Damn it, Matthias. I'm going to use my reaction to add a d4. Okay. Ouchie. Make that a 13. Okay. It's coming, Dex. Between being a rogue, inquisitive rogue, and a rabbit dude, I got all the cool stuff. <laughs> The look my wife just gave me. You may have murdered me in this game. You, you may have murdered me in real life, Sean. <laughs> you did not have hit points. All right. Yep. Uh. Sari and Ziggy both take four fire. Okay. Yeah. We're down to three tap. <coughs> okay. Anything else for Matthias? Sari's just like, the That's red it. dragonborn makes this look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Red. Um, I'm gonna stumble about. <clears throat> oh wait, wait, hold on. Con save because I'm starting my fire. Yep. I'm You're good. good. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, that's right. I don't breathe. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You're just fading. <laughs> he just wants to be included. <laughs> and I stab good this hit. fit. Six. Six, all right. Uh, I don't have anything else to do, so all I right. bite my hand and uh, invoke through my right on my teeth. Nice. All right, Anila. Oof, that one hurt. Well, I can't see anything. Um... We have no burning hippo. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I can think of doing is, but I, I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing that it, I don't know oh. it will work. Gust 100% clears smoke from an area. Well, that's that is a thing that it do. does. Okay, um. That is what I will do. Nice. Oh, useful. I'm so grateful you're here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always, okay, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't say so in the spell. But what it is it. is I've seen it in other effects that create smoke that say it can be dis it can be dispersed using mm -hmm. gust and things like that. So yes, okay. absolutely. All right, that's what I'm gonna do, and that will be my. Uh, I'm not gonna move from there, but I'm going to try to gust the room so we can see. Expending the spell slot is good enough. Yeah, it's a cantrip. Yeah, it is a cantrip. <laughs> okay. Uh, She's air genetic. Okay, so we'll say yeah, that it clears it, it, the smoke long enough. We'll say that it'll be clear for one full round starting now, so... Just keep gusting! <laughs> We're really dang solid use of it. <laughs> yes. Why is the fire growing hotter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> okay, anything else? Nope, you switched it. Nice. Nope. Okay. I did. I did. Siri, you're up. We Siri. Shouldn't there, be, shouldn't there be less fire now that we killed another one of them? Um, yes. Sweet. Siri is going to shoot it. Wait, oh, it's a dead one. 19 hits. Yay, finally. <laughs> 
Oh, nice. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. Ziggy. Okay. Um, which saves? Constitution advantage for the thingy, the breathing. Okay, 22. And then Constitution for fire. Ouchies. How much fire damage? 1d6. 2. Okay, I'm down to one temp hit point. So this is a good time to... Or, no, let's try and kill this thing first. Okay, can move over here. And great sword it. All right. That hits. 17. Okay. Ooh, taking a while. Let's do the damage. Come on. I hit it twice already. I was doing that a minute ago. Come on. I wonder if I just do it here. Nice. There we go. Seven. It explodes. <laughs> uh, deck saves from Ziggy and Red. Whoa. Both successful. Both of you take five fire damage. Now, as the fire slowly begins to go out, as combat ends, Wizpop would rush in you see that he has gathered blankets and other such things from your supplies and begins Aww. dousing the rest of the flames. Thanks, Wiz Pop. Mickin best. sits in a corner coughing. Fuck you, Mickin. <laughs> You're my best friend. Uh, okay, I go to Mickin and be like, what happened here? I just take him by the collars and just uh, like shake him a little. I, I, I don't I don't know. I just I just came down to check on on, on Winston and, and the whole place was on fire. Uh, insight doing? check. Oh yeah, um definitely gonna do insight as well. Okay, that is He's never mind. A primordial devil and I know it. Fantastic. So while Ziggy has Mickin by the collar shaking him and yelling at him. Um, can I get investigation checks from everybody that's still in the room where you found Winston? Uh, I would like to invest. I definitely would like to investigate. That. Absolutely. Uh, do, do, do. Nope. Nice, good job. Ah. Well, Winston's doing so well. Like... <laughs> Hit him again. <laughs> well, let me see if I can do a little bit better. Oh, are we? Do we have advantage on it? There we go. On the on the investigation. Boom. Yeah. There we um, go. Unfortunately not, but Anila, you do okay. have your... I don't believe you've used your sessional inspiration for the day yet. I didn't yet. So you could if you'd like to. Um, that's actually why I recommend putting on your uh, always roll with advantage so that you can see the results and decide if you'd like to take the better result. No, I'm going to say that she's totally distracted by his cannon. Nice. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So, well, with, the, uh, with the 22 uh, from Matthias, Matthias, as you're looking around, Ryback had not started his experimentations yet. None of his equipment is out. There are no burners set up anywhere. Nothing like that. Huh. With a 22 investigation, Matthias, I'll also say that you've discovered something that looks a bit odd um let's have matthias you and anyone else that's proficient in arcana that's in the room so that looks like you and anila can both make uh -huh. arcana checks as well hey no you take a look at this thing all right Man. i point something out that makes it clearer to you <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so as you're looking around you can see that there appears to be the remnants of a spell scroll. Judging by what you've seen with the methods, the lack of anything combustible otherwise, it does appear that magic was used to conjure these elemental, um, elementals and spell scrolls specifically. Furthermore, you can see that one of the crates that Winston was about to open, 
presumably, the crate with his equipment on it was marked with a glyph of warding. Okay, this is hella Don't sus. Like that. <laughs> Ziggy, Mikin yeah. is lying to you when he says he does not know what happened here. Yeah! Slap him. <laughs> and we are going to pick up here next week. Oh, fuck. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>